USS Abraham Lincoln is buzzing with activity. And while it may not be the sound of Navy jets taking off from the flight deck yet, the 90,000 ton ship is coming back to life. In June, shipbuilders began a major effort called Shore Steaming, which initiates testing on all its steam-powered systems, including the main engine complex and the ship's electrical generators. It's a true sign that we are getting ready. We're testing all the propulsion plant items, uh, engines, turbine generators, getting ready to support all ship activities. When I came onto the project, we were actually still in dry dock. Um, we were still primarily in the big rip-out phase, so the ship was a mess. It was completely being taken apart and upgraded in every way, shape, or form. Right now, what's beginning to happen is all the equipment that we overhauled during the overhaul is now being brought back on steam, and we're able to test it to make sure it's functioning properly. Bringing steam back into the ship is a major milestone, but lots is happening topside as well with radars being installed on the island, catapults being finished, and many other milestones. The catapults were a huge challenge, coming into the shipyard badly corroded and in need of extensive repair. We had to replace 100 tons of steel, had to do that as an emergent repair item. We had unprecedented cooperation and coordination between the Navy and the shipyard. A, a dedicated team of Newport News engineers and construction and production people got together. They sat down, they came up with a strategy to, to, to do this first ever job in, in a window of time that, that was unprecedented. We had to basically rip out just, just tons and tons of steel, put it back in, get it all back the way it was in an as-built condition and, and meet all of our alignment attributes. So uh, what it meant to the ship, well, is exactly that. All the hard work in really taking that, that unplanned work getting it going, getting the work completed, and not only getting it completed, but we were able to still pull that work to, to the left 18 days. Just a, a monumental task, uh, and it really spoke to just the dedication of the shipbuilders uh, and working with my force, my ship's force team. Bringing the ship back to life is amazing. I mean, uh, we all accept the challenge. Uh, we all work together as a team, and as you can see, one person can't do this work. This is all about teamwork, 100% teamwork. The most impressive thing to me is how quickly it's come from September of 2013. I mean, just the, how quick the turnaround was from it being upgraded and things being fixed and put back together is unbelievable. I love coming to work. It's, I mean, it, it, there's always a different challenge. I mean, it, it never gets boring. There's always another puzzle to solve or another piece of equipment that needs to be troubleshot. Uh, so. I, to me, I'm always eager to come to work. It's exciting to, to take it from a four-year project and you know you start coming to the end and you get to see stuff back up and running and stuff, systems coming alive and everything. And you just stay focused to get this one finished and work to get ready to get to your next one. This is my fourth RCOH and it's just amazing that you know from 69 down to 72, you know, we're looking forward to 73 that it just it blurs over time, but you know, every ship is unique, but um, you know, we're committed to returning them to the fleet better than what they came into the yard. There is no other place in the world where you can actually accomplish the amount of work that's happening here. There is no other shipyard that can refuel a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. It is just this tremendous uh, capability. Um, I would just consider, in terms of this kind of the industrial aspect, this shipyard is truly one of our nation's crown jewels. Uh, I mean, just to, just, to, just to come here and see CVN 72, CVN 65, and then right down the pier is CVN 78. Down at that end of the shipyard, we've got bits and pieces of CVN 79 put together. I'll tell you, that does not happen in any other place on this planet. More than 23 million man hours go into an RCOH, and now the end is in sight as the ship is getting ready for crew move aboard in 2016. The same year that the ship will rejoin the fleet as a freshly modernized U.S. Navy aircraft carrier ready for another 25 years of service.